Welcome to this PSN 30 Photoshop tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com where we take at least 30 seconds and check out every tool and every feature in Photoshop. Today we're going to take a look at the blur tool in Photoshop. Now, the thing I don't like about these tools that goes for the blur, the sharpen, and the smudge tool is they come across as kind of non-destructive. However, we do have this nice little feature, sample all layers, which means instead of just coming in here and creating a soft focus effect on this girl by really blurring all of this stuff around her, and then going back and realizing, whoop, we blurred the image and we messed everything up. What we can do is just create a new layer and we can blur everything around her. And you can see here, it's placing it up on a new layer. So we can really go in and blur, 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 blur any details that we don't like and get the, I mean, the, the focal point of the image already was her face, but we can really make sure we're, we're not distracted by her hands or the ring or the dress or the window behind her or the fence that she's leaning against, anything like that. And we sort of, you can see how we're bringing in this blurry effect. Now, with the blur tool, of course, you can right click at any time, choose a different brush, maybe one of the 3D brushes, maybe one of these more texturized brushes to apply uh, some blur that has, you know, I don't know, some rougher edges, if that's even uh, kind of a thing. But you do have the option. And of course, you can make your brush hard or soft. Um, I'm just working with a soft and uh, a soft edge brush. And of course, you can change the size of the brush. You can even open up the more advanced brush uh, options panel and apply things like scattering and different shape dynamics um, for when you're using a tablet or things like that. So just know that all of that stuff is there. Now, not only could the blur tool be useful, oh, I should mention, you do have also strength options. So if you only want a tiny little bit of blurring, reduce the strength to something like 10%. And then in order to really get a strong blur effect, you need to keep blurring and blurring and blurring and build up that effect. It's great for subtle effects and things like that. I just went to 100% because I you know, wanted to get max blurring kind of laid down quickly. One of the other things that I like to use uh, the blur tool for when I do use it um, is just the same type of thing, but you don't only need to use it with portraits. And here's a photo of uh, the Golden Gate Bridge and the original photo, everything's in focus. With using the blur tool, you can sort of blur things out and fake depth of field. It's not nearly as good, obviously, as using a real tilt shift lens. In fact, it doesn't even come close to being as good as something like that. Um, but you can blur something out. Uh, and maybe get away with it if it's not like a super professional uh, application. Obviously, if it's going to be a very, very professional application, you're going to go about blurring an image uh, quite a bit differently. But just know that it's not just for something like this portrait image where we're bringing all of the attention to her face. You can also use it for landscape images and things like that. So the blur tool in Photoshop. That's it. Get it. Got it. Good. Nathaniel Dodds and Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.